Hi, this is Scott Bradfield. This is the uh, midterm Hunger Games lecture for the Advanced Creative Writing Workshop. And I'm having a problem with my, uh, my camera here because it's good doing a time lapse. So I'm actually speaking and seeing my mouth move in an in in inappropriate manner as I'm speaking. Uh, you want, one of the things I've noticed about these advanced, the so-called advanced lectures, is that uh, I'm progressively looking worse. I don't know if you've noticed this. I'm actually less groomed. I haven't shaved. Um, I'm wearing my same shirt I went to the park with my dog in. And uh, I remember when, when I first started doing these, my wife kept making sure I looked good, and I, and I, I, uh, I looked right in the camera and everything, and the light was good. But now she basically says, you know, they're in your class. They either like you or they don't like you. So it doesn't matter what you look like. So I think that's, I like that attitude. So I may get, I may actually start showing up in my shorts and my, uh, you know, my tennis gear pretty soon. Um, I wanted to, the, 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 uh, the gimmick of these midterm lecture, lectures has been to try to answer some questions that I haven't answered. Again, I, I'm, uh, you know, sorry to tell you that I do know so few things. I will keep saying the same things. But I thought, sort of what, thought what we would do today is I, I kind of winnowed through the various questions and we try to look at how do we make transitions between scenes or as events happen, how do we make these transitions between different events in a story, and how that's done in a thriller, and how that's done in a literary novel. So I've taken just literally right off the shelves a couple of random examples. Misty, if you bark, that's my dog. See, even my dog barks through these lectures now. You go up, the sh up there you, or you're going out. We're going to look at Richard Yates' The Easter Parade, which most people would never consider a, a thriller. But I believe that good literary novelists use all the basic same techniques as a good thriller novelist. And they, sh they, they take advantage of these good techniques as good thriller writers do. There's, any good writer would be crazy not to know these basic techniques. They're not hard to learn, but they're impossible to learn unless you start reading these books and reading good writers. So I thought I would just pick a random, I picked a random passage from Backflash. Uh, Backflash is, a, is one of the many books that Donald E. Westlake wrote under pseudonym Richard Stark. The protagonist is a, an immoral man who's just a gangster. He basically robs people and takes large banks. He takes large amounts of money from banks and from um, gambling casinos and horse tracks and everything. He's always robbing the well-off with these gangs. And I won't go into the whole story. They're very good books and they're fun to read. Now I'm just going to start, I'm going to read you a few pack passages here. And because this is what we've talked about as well almost every week. How do you set up a scene? When you learn how to set up a scene, then making the transition between one from one scene to another is not that hard, right? So basically you're just making a series of transitions and you're setting up a series of scenes. And I'm just going to show you how quickly and effortlessly he does it, and we'll talk about this in Yates. This is chapter 6. Edward Lynch, Parker said, and extended a credit card with that name on it. One sentence, the beginning of a story, we've changed scenes, and we know where we are. Edward Lynch, he's giving his credit card to somebody, and we know it's a fake card because we just told it's Parker. I'm going to read the first two paragraphs now. Edward Lynch, Parker said, and extended a credit card with that name on it. Yes, sir, Mr. Lynch, the desk clerk, said. She had a neat, egg-shaped head with straight brown hair down both sides of it like curtains at a window and nothing much in the window. Pleasant trip. Now, there's two paragraphs, and think of how we've been talking about these in class. The dog is settling down. We've been talking this in class. We know so much where we are, who we're with, who's seeing the story. We don't need all these actions that many people are talking about. How do I describe all the actions? We start at a significant moment. We don't need to know where, she, where he's standing and to which door his shoulder is and what he's, where his gun is in his pocket. None of that's important. The scene's important. He's talking to the clerk. And then the first thing we do is we see the clerk. Yes, sir, Mr. Lynch, the desk clerk said. She had a neat, egg-shaped head with straight brown hair down both sides of it, like curtains in a window, and nothing much in the window. And he gives us an image of this woman. He doesn't give us what her skirt looks like, what color her hair is, what her eyes are like. He gives us one image. Curtains and nothing in the window. 
and that's all we need. Um, within a page, she's checked him in and she gives him a little information. And she says, we want assistance with your luggage. No, I'm okay. His luggage was one small brown canvas bag. He'd be here only one night. Picking the bag up, stuffing the message envelopes into his jacket pocket, he crossed to the elevators, not bothering to look out over the groups in the lobby. Mike and Dan wouldn't be there. They'd be waiting for his call in their rooms. So we're not describing how he's walking across and which, how he's turning and how he got into the elevator. He simply walks the elevator. He's looking for the other guys he's going to work with. And there's an important moment here. We don't need to, to take our characters through every step they take into the hotel. But he's looking for his partners. Because that's how Parker works. He's just continuously at the bottom. So we have another moment. We have a simple transition moment. that We don't need suddenly and then and afterwards. And then after he did that, he went and did this. It's just his luggage was this, picking the bag up, stuffing the message envelopes into his neck jacket pocket, he crossed the elevators, etc. So you know, there's simply a series of actions. That's all narrative is. It's a series of actions. The problem is making sure they're clear actions, and you don't winter on about every, you know, he turned, he took several turns in the corridor and then turned around the corridor and got into the elevator and punched the door to the third floor. We don't care about all these things. We're with a character, we want to see what they're Page 28, and the next page. Now listen to this transition. We, we go up in the elevator, we just have him, we're not seeing the lights in the elevator, we don't do anything, we're just, he's thinking about the job. Um, and at the end of that paragraph, we shift to the next paragraph, and we're in the room, and listen to how he gets us in the room. Does he go? He walked down the corridor, and he opened the door with his key, and inside the hallway, he put his coat on the hanger. We don't need any of these actions. The job of the writer is not to tell us every single thing a character does, it's to take us to the significant moments. And the next significant moment is a new paragraph. The room was a room with a view of Denver, a city that's flat and broad. From a high floor like this, it looks tan, unmoving, a desert where people once used to live. New paragraph. After Parker threw cold water on his face and unpacked his bag. Dan, do you hear time there? You don't need, and then later he went to do, and the next sentence, we can skip time. We can have him taken as close. We don't need to describe everything he does. The next significant moment is after he threw cold water and, and cleaned out his bag, he picked up the phone, because that's the next important thing that he does. So transitions in thrillers, you'll see a good thriller writer moving from significant event to significant event. It's like cutting in a film. You don't want to show every single fart and wince and and burp of your character, you're moving from one significant, and you're making those those actions clear. Look how I'm really basically trying to get you in many of the pieces just to make it clear what they're doing and not go on forever about it. I want to show you one more passage here. This is my copy of the Easter Parade. And I just skipped to another transition. Now here's a, here's a book where you're going to see amazing, amazingly clear Simple, fast transitions, sentence to sentence sometimes, where you're going to cover large periods of time. You're going to cover the entire life of this woman, 60s, woman in her 60s, in the, in the space of about 200 pages. And look how Yates cuts to significant and interesting moments in her life. He doesn't say 20 years later and then six months later after that he went to, she went to suddenly, then suddenly her life had changed. You don't need any of these things. You just... Simply, you just simply describe the next moment, the next moment. Um, by wittering on there, I just actually lost my page here. Um, it's shortly after the wedding. Um, yes, here it is. This is on page in my copy of the book. Chapter 3, page 31. There's a scene break here. Now, there's lots of scene breaks where they, where they cover significant periods of time breaking, but you're going to see large breaks in time from sentence to sentence and from paragraph to paragraph. Look how he does that. You know, don't listen to me. Just look how the good writers are doing it. At the end of the previous scene, we have uh, her talking to, she's going to, Emily's going to Sarah's wedding. She goes to Sarah's wedding, and it ends. And there's a break. And listen to the next scene. That spring... 
Emily was awarded a full scholarship to Bernard College. Wonderful, Pookie said. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Just think, you'll be the first member of our family with a college education. Now, talk about spare. There's a moment, which is when she gets the full scholarship. And the next moment is sequential. Look how sequential the book is when you're sequential and you're clear and you're not comparing different things. You're simply showing one moment after another. Then the reader knows where they're going. That spring, Emily was awarded a full scholarship to Barnard College. Wonderful, Pookie said. Where does that happen? Where are they? Where, where, who's doing the dishes and who's got their elbow up and who's turning to the left as the wind comes through their window and is coming? All this kind of blithering kind of uh, complications and descriptions that we're getting. We don't need them. You know, I mean, he, he's cutting out all that stuff. We don't even know where we are at the, in many ways, but we know it's after that and we know it's between the mother and the daughter. Wonderful, Pookie said. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Just think, you'll be the first member of our family with a college education. Except for Daddy, you mean. Oh, well, yes, I suppose that's right, but I met our family. Anyway, it's just wonderful. Tell you what, let's do. Let's call Sarah right away and tell her, and then you and I will get all dolled up and go out and celebrate. Again, except for Daddy, you mean. Oh, well, yes, I suppose that's right. She, we don't need to. She said with a withering look of scorn and ingratitude and dislike for her ex-husband. These phrases, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be keep ripping out of the world if I can. We don't need them. The beauty of the sentences are the woman's voice talking about this husband she doesn't want to talk about. Now listen to another time transition here. Now we've had two sharp time transitions, just exactly the way Stark is doing it, simply by describing the next active moment. Not analyzing, not explaining. And then you and I will all get, get all dolled up and go out and celebrate. They did call Sarah. She said she was very pleased. And then Emily said, I'm going to call Daddy now, okay? There's two more transitions. There's just the actions. Oh, well, all right, certainly, if you want to. A full scholarship, he said? Wow, you must have really impressed those people. And that's pure thriller techniques or the thriller is using purely literary techniques. It's moving to the next significant moment. All right, if you want to. She went to the phone and picked it up and dialed the father's number who had moved to so-and-so because he had moved his job. And he was... What you want is to know what's the next beautiful, interesting moment of your story, not try to just shove in all this information that no one cares about. And we, we skip all that. We don't need to know if she's calling him. We don't need to know where he's, how he got into the apartment he's in. A full scholarship, he said. Wow, you must have really impressed those people. She arranged to meet him for lunch the following day. In one of the dark basement restaurant, restaurants he liked near City Hall. She got there first and waited near the coat room. And she thought, he looked surprisingly old as he came down the steps wearing a raincoat that wasn't quite clean. Okay. Perfect. Is it you know the same like the window the, the the hair was across her face like two curtains with nothing in the windows. He came into this restaurant in a raincoat that wasn't really that clean. It's an image, and we don't struggle when you find yourself struggling with these sentences and trying to explain how the raincoat, which direction it was turned up and which way the collar was and how the button on the third button was made out of a certain color it was different from. It. it gives us one image that we can see. We know where we are. And the next scene can happen, and he can say, hello, honey, he said. So if you'll just look for these transitions and the way they're making transitions, they're basically, just this is why I've been trying to focus on trying to get these good opening crisp sentences for scenes, because every transition is simply a crisp explanation of what you're seeing, who you're seeing, where you're doing it. And uh, you, can use, you can use more than this. You can use the spare, thriller-like sentences and languages and images. Um, but you got it. You got to stop explaining things. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Okay, I'll see you guys. Uh, see, you, see you soon. And Misty, Misty, say goodbye. Say goodbye. This is what the advanced class comes with a dog.